little iron curtain world of lost souls sitting in the shadow of the Golden Gate. Its inmates are felons the other prisons didn't want. That little stretch of water between Alcatraz and San Francisco is wider than the Pacific as far as the prisoners are concerned. They're not going to cross it unless they die or serve their time. But modern science performs many wonders. To five Alcatraz convicts, a scientific experiment brought the greatest miracle of all, a chance to get off the rock. Dan Staley, 93271. Paul Willowis, 22787. Abner Smith, 11032. Eddie Gans, 22459. Barry Morgan, 20835. I guess that's it. I want to remind you again that you volunteered for a hazardous medical experiment. I can't tell you any of the details because I don't know them myself. So, if anyone wants to back out, this is the last chance. Just so we understand the deal, after the experiment we go free, no matter what? That's right. We've promised to commute the remainder of your sentences no matter what happens. We're ready. Have the MPs give you a receipt for the prisoners when you reach the landing. Yes, sir. I know what you're probably thinking, but honestly, I don't believe it'll be so bad. Just that we've never tried it before on human beings, and we want to be sure that there are no harmful effects before we try it on actual patients. You might consider yourselves test pilots. What's it all about, Dr. Finley? We weren't told much. Colonel Harris will explain that. Oh, there's one thing I can tell you. All our rabbits and guinea pigs came through without a scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Finley's right. I want to thank you, men, for volunteering. You have a chance to do great service to humanity. It was just such experiments as this that taught us to lick yellow fever, how to use the sulfur drugs. Now our atomic energy research has given us what may prove to be another great weapon against disease. Now, Dr. Finley, since you're in charge of the experiment, will you explain the procedure? Men, what we're going to do is to inject a, a harmless metallic salt into your blood. Then give you a radiation from a new substance known as radioactive isotope. This converts the salts in your blood into millions of little depth charges that knock out certain microbes. What'll that do? We think it will give us a cure for a rare blood disease that's always been fatal. Someday, it may even lead us to a cure for leukemia. I uh, think that's about all we can tell them, Doctor. We'd better get started. Well, men, good luck. Oh, Miss McKenna, can you take them to the examination room, please? Yes, Doctor. Right this way, please.
pretty fit. A good selection. Sorry Dr. Williams couldn't be here to see his experiment. All this was his basic research. Well, that's the army. If we hadn't needed him so badly at Oak Ridge, he could have flown in with me. We are ready for radiation. Feeling a bit tense, Eddie? Yeah. Ah, relax. We'll make it. Yes, Doctor. Oh, well, what's this? Well, the boys in the ward sent them over to the volunteers. Is it all right? Why not? Mm, nice. scissors. You were no friend of his. You stabbed him and killed him with these scissors. Oh. I can't tell you anymore. They all look so peaceful and normal. I had no idea of such a thing happening. I am sorry, Lieutenant, but we're all agreed there was negligence involved. We're all willing to forego court martial. We have no choice except to ask you to request relief from active duty. Yes, sir.
Is this Dr. Ross Williams? Um, that's right. What's your theory on this, Doctor? I haven't any. I just arrived. You all know more about this than I do. Dr. Finley, is there any chance it might have been murder? You know, the assistant DA came to the meeting. In my opinion, no. Men were the best of friends. It's too bad about that nurse. Yes, yes, it is. Come right in, Doctor. Thank you. Well, Dr. Williams, glad to see you. Say, that was a crazy idea of yours, flying all the way out here from Oak Ridge. I didn't think they'd let you come. They had to. I was going batty back there. Oh? I understand Dr. Finley sent you all the medical reports. Yes, but there was nothing in them to indicate that in all of my research that... Well, I just don't understand how it could have happened. Just one of those unpredictables. You find them in the best of families. And, uh, an experiment? Have you decided yet? Afraid we have. And? Research will be abandoned. The remainder of the isotope destroyed. Uh, how, how soon? Immediately. The heat's already on us from Washington. This is a dangerous thing you've turned loose. Here he is now. Uh, Joan, this is Dr. Ross Williams, Miss Joan McKenna. How do you do, Doctor? He did the research. Oh, not enough, I'm afraid. You must feel worse than I do, Doctor. So they gave it to you, eh? Oh, undiluted. A lethal dose. Seems to be the day for it. I'll get the car. How long will you be here? Oh, I'm uh, going back tonight. Nurse, have you ever seen any cases of this disease? Yes. Months and months of injections, blood transfusions, and no hope. Not anymore. And I thought I was doing something useful. Useful. A man dead and my career ruined. Dick. Hello, Joan. How'd it go? Dick, this is Dr. Ross Williams. Hello, Dick. It's a tough break, Doc. After all your hard work. Oh. A thing like this happening to your own brother makes you feel so helpless. Excuse us, Dick. Sure, Doc. That's why I volunteered for the experiment. I thought... Hey, Doc, you can work out a way to go on with your research. You don't need convicts. Any of us would be glad to help you out. Uh, Miss McKenna, you were closer to this than any of the others. Before my plane leaves, I wonder if I could go over it with you in detail. But why? Well, there must be some obvious reason it went wrong, something we all overlooked. After all, four out of five reacted normally. The hearing to fix responsibility in the Adam Ray killing of convict Eddie Gans drew to a dramatic close today. Medical authorities decided that the four convict volunteers who survived, including Barry Morgan, wielder of the death scissors, have shown no after effects from the ray and may be safely given their freedom. The district attorney was expected to concur in the decision. Mr. Walton. Will you sit down, please? Do you see any reason for holding the convicts any longer, Mr. Walton? No, I'm sure this report will satisfy the DA. Good. Put in the report that the assistant district attorney and the Department of Defense both approved Morgan's release. Uh, I'll go talk to the men. No need to hold these men any longer. Just take them to the desk and sign them out. Does uh, that include me, Colonel? Yes, it does. You've just been cleared by the board, Morgan. Thanks, Colonel. You'll all report to Dr. Finley for regular checkups. Keep in touch with him.
I was born in Napoli, but I come to America to find a good calamine. <laughs> you know, uh, Joan, the biggest trouble with research work is you spend your time in a lab. Forget all about people. I can understand that. You know, meeting Dick this afternoon was quite a shock. Help me get my feet back on the ground, though. This work has got to go on. Not for my sake, but for Dick and the others like him. But I still don't understand how I can help you. Well, you were the only one in the ward when it happened, outside of the other convicts. Was there anything unusual in their reactions that... I'll tell you what. Why don't you just start at the beginning and tell me exactly what happened? It was a little while after the convicts had left the radiation room. The doctors had examined all five of them, and they all seemed perfectly normal. Slight reactions, but nothing serious. I was still on duty when... through the heart. He was dead when they reached him. Is that of any help? Joan, a reaction like that is impossible. Why? I've tested that treatment hundreds of times on laboratory animals. The radioactive salt usually dulls the mind, slows the motor reflexes. Sometimes there's no apparent reaction to the injection at all. Evidently, that was the case with Morgan but not violence. But what does it mean? Could that be the flaw you were hoping to find? It might be, very possibly. But if what you say is true, then Morgan... I've been thinking the very same thing. I've got to go see Dr. Finley. You want to come along? Yes, I'd like to. What's the matter? You don't like calamari? Oh, no, it's fine, fine. interrupt you. Oh, that's all right. I got my time in. How are you, Joan? Hello, Doctor. What's the idea of all this? I didn't realize you had talent. <laughs> I hadn't. But Mrs. Finley thought I was reaching the age when I ought to have a hobby. I've always wanted to play the piano, and so... Uh... Normal people start during their first childhood. But not this husband of mine. Oh, you haven't met Eve. Eve, shake hands with Joan McKenna. Hello, Eve. Now shake hands with Dr. Williams. Charmed, I'm sure. Now, her children have contributed more to medicine than I have. 
I'll go make some coffee. Do you want to help me, Joan? Of course. Come along, Evie. Time you went to bed. Uh, <laughs> Doctor, I'm, I'm not going back to Oak Ridge tonight. Oh? Is there any way you could make them hold off destroying it for a week or so? What? The isotope? Hmm. Why? Well, I'm not just going to let it drop. I'll find some way to... You think I don't know how you feel? I've been a long time in medicine, remember? Multiply Dick's case by several hundred. I've seen them, talked to them. Oh, I'll find some way to go on, with or without help. It's their only chance, and I'm not going to let anyone take it from them. You know, Ross, the Army made an awful mistake in getting tied up with me. Oh, well, why? I'm such a poor administrator. Even the simplest little reports. They get lost, or they're thrown away, or uh, I forget to sign them. I always hold them up a couple of days. Sometimes uh, longer. Thank you, Doctor. Why don't you go and see Walton in the DA's office? If you're right about Morgan's reaction, he might be interested. Unfortunately, I can't do a thing. There's a the little matter of proving it. Well, there must be something you can no. do. No. The case is officially closed. Well, uh, supposing I could talk to Morgan and find out how he felt during the experiment. Doctor, if the police and the DA's office couldn't find a motive, <laughs> what chance have you got? Where can I find him? He's joined up with an old partner in an auction gallery, Pacific and Elm Streets. Dr. Ross Williams. I want to see Mr. Morgan. You a friend of his? Well, he'll know my name. Come on inside. I want you to notice this magnificent antique Chinese vase, one of the finest examples of the Chenlong period, approximately 1565. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, notice the delicate and exquisite five-color enamel decoration on the porcelain body. The workmanship is... There's a Dr. Ross Williams here to see you. Ross Williams. Do you know him? I know the name. You don't know what he wants? He didn't say. All right, bring him in. $200 is bid here. Thank you. Who is the guy? Yeah, it's something to do with that hospital stuff. $300 for it, ladies and gentlemen. $300. $300 for it, please. $300 for it, please. 200 What do you want, Doc? Uh, are you Barry Morgan? This is Duke Shaw, my partner. Took care of things while I was in stir. Did all right, too. How do you do? Well? I'd uh, like to talk to you alone. Let's see how things are going outside. All right. Now, uh, what's up? Well, I've just been talking to Dr. Finley. He tells me that after the radiation, your reactions were just as normal as the others. Then, all of a sudden, your system reacted violently. So what? Everybody's different, Doc. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, here's why I came. You see, there, there must be something characteristic in your body that causes this atypical reaction. I thought that if I might examine you, we might possibly find it. It's a closed book. All washed up, finished. Mr. Morgan, there are hundreds of cases of this disease. If we give up now, they've lost all hope. They aren't my worry. I only got one, Barry Morgan. But you can't do that. You can't turn your back on hundreds of people. Can't I? Listen, Doc. Ain't you done enough? You made me kill my best friend. Now, why don't you just forget this whole thing right now? If 
that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. I'm not going to give up, Morgan. Just remember that. Uh, wait a minute, Doc. Now, since you're here, I'd like to show you the rest of the layout. This is the reason for the guards. I wondered about that. Sure, this is a private party, but it doesn't hurt to be careful. How about trying your luck, Doc? Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm not much of a gambler. I ought to try it. This is the wheel where the customers are supposed to win. I don't get it. Well, tomorrow we sell them an antique. Oh, well. Uh, how does this thing work? Well, you pick a number and a color, and the wheel does the rest. Uh, number three seems to be hot tonight. Try it. Okay, uh, just once. Number three, red. Uh, wait a minute, I, I didn't... Oh. Uh... oh, yes, you did. Again, number three, red. This is Peggy. Say, fella, do you know what time it is? Oh, all right. Joan. Joan, hello. Joan, are you there? Yes, I'm here. What's the matter? You don't sound like yourself. You're going where? Alcatraz. What for? Yes, of course I'll go along. You're sure of what? Murder. Tell him to hang up. Murder's right. But how do you know Morgan's worried? Have you got any evidence? Yes, I think I have. Four six nine 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 is here to see you, sir. Bring him in. Henry can tell you a lot more about that friendship than I can. He came up from Leavenworth with Gans and Morgan. Hello, Warden. Hello, Henry. Say, what's this? What do you got here? It's just my collection. It's all right. I know about Henry's collection. Thanks. What did you want with me? Dr. Williams and Miss McKenna came to see you. Is that so? Swell. First visitors I've had since my missus passed away six months ago. They want to talk to you about Eddie Gans and Barry Morgan. Yes, we're, uh, we're trying to find out how good friends they really were. Oh, Morgan and Eddie were friends, all right. Good friends? If they hadn't been such good friends, I might not be here. What do you mean? Well, it's quite a story. 
We were in Leavenworth together. Some of the boys planned a break, Barry, Eddie, and some others. I heard about it, so they said I had to go with them. It's off. They found the stuff in Eddie's mattress. Somebody's got to pay for this. Lay off, Eddie. He's no stool. You'd stick by that dirty big mouth. I said lay off. Maybe you and he are both in on this. You take care of him and everything else. Why not this? Hey, fellas, easy, the guard. They sent the four of us to Alcatraz for trying to break out. Then you could say that Morgan saved Gans's life. I guess you could. Well, that doesn't prove any great friendship. I'd do the same thing for anybody, whether I knew him or not. Ross, you're reaching for straws. Yes, I guess you're right. Well, thanks very much, Warden. I'm sorry to cause you such unnecessary trouble. Not at all. Uh, would you like to see my collection before you go? Your collection? Yeah, my postcards. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, but I have to get right back. Oh, why not? It'll only take a minute. Well, all right. Well, you, you certainly get a lot of mail. Oh. Oh, none of these are mine. You see, nobody writes to me. I get these from the fellas just before they throw them away. Oh, I, I see. That's almost as good as getting them yourself. I wish sometime I could get some sent to me. I'll have a real collection if I stay here long enough. You'll be here long enough. I didn't know there was a woman in Gantz's life. There was some talk about his being married at one time. Didn't show on the record. Henry, did, did Gantz give you this? Yeah, that's the one he gave me. Well, if you let me have it, I promise that you'll get a postcard every week written to you. Oh, gee, that'll be great. Okay, Harry, you keep trailing them. I'll send Shaw on ahead. The doc and the nurse are on the rock. They saw the warden. Harry says they just left by bus for Lake Tahoe. You better go up to the Ace High Club and see what's going on. Okay, Barry. Hello, come on in. New people, huh? Well, you like the lake, everybody does. Uh, can I help you? Well, I wonder if you could tell Oh, uh, We're interested in some of your properties. Uh, do you have any pictures? Are you kidding? I've got pictures of every place on the lake. It's all part of the service. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. <laughs> uh-huh, here we are. Now, you just take a look through there. And if you don't find what you want, well, we'll build it. <laughs> Fine. Thanks. Uh, say, if you folks don't mind, I got this work to get out. Just take me a minute. You go right ahead. Take your time. Certainly. <laughs> Why don't you just show him the card? Don't you scientists know that the shortest distance between two points... Is that it? Yeah. What does it say? Nothing. Just the price. Find something you like? Uh... Yeah, what about this one? Uh-huh. 
Are you sure that's what you mean? Why? What's wrong with it? Why, it's been boarded up for the last few years. I've been thinking of taking it off the list altogether. Um, where is this house? Oh, way down at the end of the lake. You can't get to it except by boat. The cashier at the Ace High Club owns it. Oh. Well, where's the Ace High Club? Oh, just a quarter of a mile down. Uh, take the station wagon bus right, right outside. Right. We'll... Say, what about the property? Oh, we'll think about it. We'll let you know. Oh. Goodbye. Goodbye, and uh, come back soon. <laughs> Thanks very much. You bet. Goodbye. Oh, hello. Uh, this is uh, Jim Carlton. Yeah, who's this? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Say, remember you asked me to call you if I got a prospect for the Gans place? Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah, a young fella. Yeah, he just left here a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Well, what do we do? Would you mind going to the hotel and picking up our reservations? I'm going to take the station wagon bus to the Ace High Club. I'll be back for dinner. Oh, there it comes now. Ross, hmm? try to be careful. Sure. Uh, Ace High Club. He's been hurt in the kitchen. I got to phone for a doctor. The mixer fell off the top shelf and... Wait a minute. I'm a doctor. Good. Come on out in the kitchen. Hurry down, will you? Can't seem to find anything wrong with... Do we have to keep this up before the doc catches on? sure you're all right? I'm a doctor, remember? I wish you would. How did it happen this time? I don't know. You don't know? I walked through the door of the Ace High Club and something hit me on the head. Next thing I remember, I woke up in a clump of bushes. It's uh, quite a contusion, isn't it? Will you promise me something? What? That you'll stay here and keep out of trouble. And give me that card. Why, where are you going? The Ace High Club to ask about Ethel. They won't know me. 
You stay here and have your dinner while I'm gone. Wait. And no arguments. Nurse's orders. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Finley speaking. Who? Ross? Well, where are you calling from? Hinjun or Tahoe. Oh, it's nice there this time of year. But they, they haven't destroyed the isotope yet, have they? Not yet. The remainder will be destroyed in the morning. But can't you see? We're right on the verge of breaking it wide open, and if Joan finds out anything at all... What's the matter with you? Nothing. I just don't want to meet anyone tonight. And why'd you come in here by yourself? Just for a drink. Again. Again? It's early, kid. Stick around. Ethel isn't here yet, huh? When does the uh, cashier come in? Ethel? <coughs> Ethel? Sure. Ethel Gans. Ethel Gans? That's right. You say you want to see her? There she is now, talking to Shaw. I'm awfully sorry I'm late. I'll be ready in a minute. Hello, Ethel. Hi. I'm Joan McKenna. Hello. I'm awfully glad I found you. You are Ethel Gans, aren't you? And you sent this card to Eddie Gans? Where did you get it? From a friend of Eddie's. You were related to Eddie Gans? He was my stepfather. Listen, Ethel. Can you make some excuse to get away and come over to the hotel with me? Why should I? I don't even know you. Of all the... I was the nurse on the experiment. Dr. Williams... He did the research. He's waiting at the hotel now. Ethel, we have definite reason to believe that your father was deliberately murdered. Murdered? Are you sure? Almost certain. Won't you please come over to the hotel? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'd better. You meet me outside. I'll make some excuse to Duke Shaw. Now, our only chance to prove that the radiation wasn't responsible for your father's death is to show that Morgan had a motive for murder. That they weren't the great friends they were supposed to be. Then that's why you've come to me, looking for a motive. That's right. It's no longer just a hunch, Miss Gantz. Morgan is worried. He's had me beaten up twice. My stepfather and I weren't the best of friends, but I wouldn't want anybody to murder him and get away with it. Maybe I'd better tell you. Tell us what? About the money. Oh, I never knew for sure, but Eddie hinted after they sent him away that he'd hidden a lot of cash in the old summer place. The postcard. Yes. All Eddie ever wanted from me was to know about the house. But Morgan couldn't have known about the money. They didn't know each other before they went to jail. You suppose we could take a look at that house? I have a hunch we might find something. We'd have to get a boat. There's no road. We can take one at the pier. 
fine. Joan, take a cab to the airport. If there's no plane for San Francisco, charter one. You've got to get to Dr. Finley right away. Tell him he can't destroy the isotope now. Wait a minute. that money, but didn't know where it was hidden. Maybe that's why he stuck so close to your father, even when Eddie was sent to Alcatraz. Then why would Morgan kill him? Suppose during all that long time in jail, he found out from Eddie where the money was. From then on, he wouldn't need your father anymore, don't you see? Eddie'd just be in the way. So that's where the money was hidden. I wonder how much it was. Quarter of a million dollars. Quarter of a million? Wait a minute. How did you know? Because I found it. You see, Morgan got himself sent up just to try to find out about Eddie's dough. Well, I was right about that anyway. But he never could. I came up here. After Eddie was sent to jail, I went over the whole place with saws, hammers, files, chisels. I'd have torn it down piece by piece if I had to. And then I found it. Right where you were looking, Doc. So, you and Morgan planned it together, and then when you had the money, Eddie was just in the way, huh? That's right. Look, why are you telling me this? I can put you on the stand and prove that Morgan had a definite motive for murder. I'm afraid not, Doc. You see, a wife ain't allowed to testify against her husband. trying to get that money. Know that Eddie chiseled from me in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. And when Ethel found it, we knew we had to get rid of Eddie. Then this experiment came along. I saw my chance, and I killed him. And fooled them all. Sure. Ethel and I had the perfect setup. And then you show up. Stick your nose in and try to spoil it all. You'll never get a case against me, Doc. You can see that. And I'm a nice guy. I don't want to keep beating you up all the rest of my life. Now, why don't you go back where you came from and be happy with your test tube, hmm? Sorry, Morgan. It's no deal. I don't care how long it takes. I'm not gonna let you sacrifice all those lives just so you can save your own. Dr. Finley, I'm from the wire service. Have you had any word on Dr. Williams' disappearance? Not a word. Have you checked with the police? And the DA and the highway patrol. They're still checking on that nurse's story, but so far, nothing. 
This Ethel, she mentioned, has dropped out of sight, too. I think you know more about the case than I do. Could it have been foreign agents, Doctor? After all, he was in a tunnel. I'm general. sorry, there's nothing more I can tell you. Yes, I think that did it very nicely. You through with me then, Doc? Yes, just as soon as I've signed these reports. Here's yours. I have one for each of you two. Well, I guess you won't be seeing us anymore. No, I guess not. Lucky we found this out in time, or we'd have been seeing a lot of each other. Well, good luck. Thank you, Doctor. Hello? Barry Morgan! Ah, oh, what a relief. I've been calling you for days, but they told me you were out of town. Can you spare me half a day of your time? Important? I'd say yes. It probably means your life. Sooner the better, yes. Yes, I'll be here. And that's what we found with the other three men. If he's neglected, it's a dangerous condition. But, uh, oh, nothing to it when taken in time. But if the rays caused it, how could the same stuff cure it? Well, that's, uh, that's one of the peculiarities of medicine. And the others took it okay? Without a whimper. They were here a little while ago. Ask them. And it's okay with me, Doc. But, uh, I don't want to kill anybody else. I quite understand your fear. But don't worry. You'll be alone in the war. Okay, Doc. to get away with it, Morgan. You know that. Get away with what, Doc? Murder. I don't know what you mean, Doc. Dr. Ross Williams was attempting to prove that you'd murdered Gantz. I'm pretty sure you killed Dr. Williams, too. That's one more reason why I'm making sure that you don't go free. Ah, oh, you're way off, Doc. I couldn't help myself. It was the experiment. You know that. You see, Morgan, I can prove now that your reaction to that radiation was impossible. You were faking in order to get away with murder. Well, I'm not trying to get away with anything. You and your kind can never stop the advance of science. I've uh, worked out a little demonstration very simple, so simple that it will be obvious to anybody that your killing of Gantz was completely voluntary. Is that so? Does uh, anybody else know about this, Doc? No, no, not yet. They soon will, though. I wouldn't bet on that, Doc. Oh. Uh, I brought Mr. Walton, like you said. Hi, Walton. Doctor, I understand from Miss McKenna you've been exposing more patients to that ray. That's a criminal act, Doctor, after the board report. That's right. They put me under it again. I didn't want to. I was afraid I'd kill somebody else, too. And you see, that's just how it happened. What do you say to that, Doctor? Then um, you maintain that your reactions this time were exactly the same as during the first treatment. That's right. And you had a sudden, uncontrollable desire to kill. Yeah, I couldn't help myself. 
Uh, Corporal, what was the quantity of isotopic radiation you applied to uh, Mr. Morgan's body? Exactly zero. Young medical researcher gives life to prove technique. Atomic radiation treatment means new hope for many. Just a minute, Dick. I have to keep a promise for a friend of mine. And so the fighting and the sacrifice go on. One man falls, a hundred close up the ranks. Whether the enemy be disease and blight or mere stupidity and arrogant self-interest, the soldier-scientist battle for a better world continues, making worthwhile the lives and the deaths of such heroic men as 